Hi, I am Maria, your virtual tourist guide in Madrid. A nice and quiet walk is to get to the Retiro Park through the Boulevard de Sains de Baranda, which is behind me. Along the walk there are terraces where you can sit down to have a beer or even eat. When we finish walking through Sains de Baranda we will find ourselves in front of the Retiro Park, we only need to cross the street to access one of its doors. The most popular park in Madrid covers an area of 118 hectares and is protected on its perimeter by a fence with 18 gates that open every day at 6 a.m. and close at 10 p.m. or midnight, depending on whether it is winter or summer. After entering, to the left we find the new public library, very frequented by young and old. Taking advantage of the Google Map Street View, we can go back in time and see that in 2006, they were building it. There are many places to visit within the Retiro, but we are going to cross it from east to west, to reach the pond. This is one of the most beautiful and wide walks in the park. We have already reached the central pond where you can rent boats for row a while. At my back, the monument to Alfonso XII. We are going to leave now through the Puerta de Alcala, which is 300 meters from here. This gate was built in 1885, and through it we will go to Independence Square, in reference to the war against Napoleon. Right in front of us we will find the Puerta de Alcala. Alcala Gate is one of the five royal gates that surrounded the old city of Madrid. The current one was inaugurated in 1778 by King Carlos III, replacing another that already existed since the 16th century. Although the monument has not changed for three centuries, the floral ornament does change continuously as we can see going back in time with Google Street View. From red to yellow flowers in 2016. White flowers in 2015. From here we can already see the Sibels Square, a little further down, so let's go closer to see it. Here we are. It was also erected by Carlos III. The fountain represents the mother goddess Sibels, identified in the Greek pantheon with Rhea, mother of the Olympian gods and symbol of the earth and fertility, on a chariot pulled by two lions, Atalanta and Hippomenes. The fountain is the venue for Real Madrid, when it wins a European Cup, which it has already achieved 13 times. Behind the fountain we have the Sibel's Palace, current seat of the City Council, but until 2000, it was the headquarters of the post office. Continuing along Alcala Street, at the beginning of Gran Via, we will find the Metropolis Building, built in 1907, in a French neo-baroque and modernist style. What I have always liked the most is its black dome with its golden trim, made of real 24 karat gold leaf. To the left of Gran Via, is the building of the Circulo de Bellas Arts, built in 1920, with its gigantic statue of Minerva. On our way to the center of Madrid, we now come across two unique buildings, opposite the Canaligas complex, completely renovated inside after five years of work where a gallery of luxury stores and a Four Seasons Hotel will open soon. On the left the former headquarters of Banco Bilbao with its imposing chariot. And finally, we arrive at Puerta del Sol, the end of our walk. Practically the entire square and the streets that come together, are now pedestrianized. But if we go back in time, in 2008 it was possible to circulate by car in all directions, Work was being done on the new metro station and curiously, the iconic advertisement for Tio Pepe was placed on the roof of another house. In 2014, the station was over, and the ad reappears again. Well, this is all. The walk is about 3 kilometers long, and I usually do it many mornings if the weather is sunny, which is very frequent. I hope to see you here very soon. Thanks for your attention.